Hello everybody, today's lesson is going to be on our very first element of design that we'll be discussing in this class, and that element of design is called a line. So what I want you to do is I want you to go over to your Canvas page, and I want you to go down to module, uh, go to the modules, and I want you to go to module two, which is unit two, the elements of design, and then I want you to find the link that says doodle line activity PDF. I want you to click on that and pull that up. It should look like this. Okay, and I want you to, um, if you have access to a printer, I want you to print this piece of paper out. If you do not have access to a printer, you don't need to necessarily do this activity, but it is fun, and I'm not collecting it for points, but um, it's a kind of like a personality type test, so it's a little bit fun to do. Uh, once you have that printed out, I want you to pause this video, and I want you to draw in all of these pictures. So I want you to finish each, bo finish each box by creating a picture that you would like, and then after you've finished all your boxes, come back over here and push play, and I will go through the um, what each of these boxes mean, and it's just a fun little intro game that I always do when we start talking about line. So um, do that, and then we will move forward. Okay, so we did our doodle game. Uh, the first line, this is your horizontal line, and this represents confidence. The line in the middle of this block indicates your confidence with the world around you. If you drew items above the line, these are usually things you feel like you have control over, and items below the line are things in gener you um, generally feel like you have are, um, that you have are out of control for you. Next is our circles box. This one had the three circles on it, and this represents your imagination. Life is full of circles. We travel and we return. We learn and we forget. This block illustrates how you use your imagination. If you draw the face of an animal or a person, you show a liking for pets or friends. If you draw an object such as a bowling ball, you are inventive. Next we have our, um, our square, and this represents home. This box strongly identifies with um, your home. If you draw inside the box, your interests are within your home. If you draw outside of the box, you have interests outside of the home. Home symbols such as a fireplace, a house, windows, or doors indicate a strong desire for a home atmosphere. Next we have our zigzag line and this um, is, it symbolizes aspiration. If from this design you are able to add creativity to solving challenges in your life, if you make this shape into a mountain range, you have high aspirations and goals. If you make a geometric pattern, you enjoy challenges and solving problems. Next, we have our X, and that is our decision. This represents your decision-making skills. This block describes your decision-making skills. If you draw lines or arrows that intersect or point at the center, this indicates that you are focused on your decision. If you draw nonlinear shapes, such as circles or irregular wavy lines, it indicates that you are not overly concerned with making decisions. You're a little bit more carefree. Next, we have our arch, and this um, represents the plans for your future. It indicates a passageway to your future. If you draw a dark tunnel, this indicates that you may be expecting some stormy times ahead. If you draw a rainbow, rose, trellis, or doorway, you are looking forward to your future. If the door is open, opportunities lie ahead. Our next one is our personal motto. Whatever you drew on this sign suggests a personal motto for you. If the sign is positive, you generally have a pleasant outlook on life. If the sign is a warning, watch out. <laughs> Not scary at all. If the sign indicates directions, you are likely ready for a change in your life. Next, we have our V, and this is um, stands for creativity. If you draw an ice cream cone, the V-neck of a shirt or sweater, or the tip of a pencil, you have an average creativity. If you use the V as part of a more complex design, you are more of a complex thinker. And then we have our blank box, which stands for the great unknown. This block illustrates what is filling up your thoughts these days. Chances are whatever you drew is important to you. Just a fun little game, and um, it's kind of a fun little personality game. If it didn't really match your personality, that's fine. They don't always do that, but it was just kind of fun. Um, so here are all our elements of design. We have line, space, shape, and form, texture, light, and color. Um, pattern is also in there as well, I've, but um, we don't. I don't think we talk about pattern very much in this class, I, so I think I put, forgot to put it in there. But your elements of design are line, space, shape, form, texture, pattern, light, and color. And uh, we are going to start off today with line. In this class, we do talk about color, but we do it in a separate unit. So when we talk about the elements of design for unit two, we are going to skip over color because color is very broad and it's very vast. And so I like to spend a lot more time on it than just one day. 
So that's why color is its own unit. So yes, it's an element of design, but we will not be talking about it in this particular unit. There are four types of line. You have your vertical lines, your horizontal lines, your curved lines, and your diagonal lines. And the way you use these in design creates certain feelings and certain um, looks in design that mean certain things. So we're gonna go through those and I'm gonna kind of show you um, what they mean and the kind of feelings they create when you put them in design. First, you have your vertical lines and these are lines that run up and down and they create feelings of height, strength, and formality. I love vertical lines, I always have. Um, I like, I really like tall ceilings and tall rooms. Um, I've always been a fan of vaulted ceilings and high ceilings, so anything that uses vertical lines I'm a big fan of. I am obsessed with this window in this picture. I think it is absolutely gorgeous, and um, I love how high and tall it makes the room look. Um, it does have a lot of strength and formality to it, which I think I like too, just because I'm a much more organized person. And because I'm an organized person, I am just drawn to vertical lines a little bit more, but that's just me personally. You can be drawn to other lines based on your personality. Um, here are some examples of vertical lines being used in design. This one, it's being used in the shiplap as well as the windows above the doors. And then the next picture, um, you can use vertical lines without, it doesn't have to be stripes, okay? Stripes are obviously a very easy way to show line, but it can be through shapes. Your vertical lines in the next picture are being shown in the shape of your bookcases, the curtains and the pleats of the curtains, the tall bed posts. Um, all of those are vertical lines that are being shown in this room, making the room look relatively tall. Um, speaking of strength and formality, uh, vertical lines are used very often in schools, business buildings, and churches because they want to use, um, they want to have that strength and that formal type look, which vertical lines possess. Um, if you've ever been into some of these really, really beautiful Catholic churches, um, they are, they definitely create those feelings of just lots and lots of strength um, and like that formal look. You'll see that often in lockers in schools. Okay, then we have our horizontal lines. These are lines that run from left to right across the horizon, and they create feelings of being restful and they are more informal. I'm not as big of a fan of horizontal lines just because I am a much more um, straight up and down, uh, organized, uh, formal person. So me personally, I like those, those types of lines best. But if you are a, a little bit more easygoing and you're a little bit calmer and not as tightly wound as I am, then you may be drawn more to horizontal lines. You can see them being used in this picture with the shiplap. Here in this picture on the left, you can see it being used in the paint. It is very, very subtle, but you can tell that there is two different shades of um, beige and cream being used. And you also can see the horizontal lines in the way that the window seat is and the rug as well. Um, next picture, you have the horizontal lines being used and how the wood is um, the grain of the wood and the pallets of the wood that are pressed together to make this sliding barn door. And then also in the way that the planks are laid on the floor, um, you see horizontal lines. Okay, then we have curved lines. Um, this is a line that deviates from straightness in a smooth, continuous fashion. This is probably my least favorite kind of line, um, just personally. Um, these create feelings of softness, playfulness, and serenity. You can see that in this design of this bathroom, which I'm pretty sure is a European bathroom based on how the toilet tank is shaped, the tank is above on the seat, the seat on the wall, and that's how a lot of European toilets are. Um, but you can see curved lines throughout the almost entire design. You have the circular bathtub. You have the way that the curtains are draped um, create curved lines. You have the curved sh um, curtain rod. You have the round mirror. You have the curved lines in the vanity. You have the curved lines in the toilet. Um, and even I, everything, the step is curved, everything in this design is curved. Um, it does create a feeling of softness and serenity. This, this is a very, very relaxing room to look at. Look at when I walk into this room, when I look at this room, I feel peace and it's definitely because of the curved lines. Here we have some more curved lines that are being used. Um, in the left picture, you see it in the ceiling, in the vaulted ceilings. You see it in the way the curtains are draped. You see it in the ornate decorations on the wall. You see it in the round bed, the round pillows. You see it in the, cur um, in the curved lines on the nightstands. In the next picture, you see the curved lines in the chandelier. You see it on the wall. Um, you see it um, in the rug as well. Okay, then we have diagonal lines. This is my second favorite kind of line. These are straight lines, but they are neither horizontal or vertical. They um, sit at a slanted angle, and they create feelings of action, movement, and excitement. 
I think I'm just more drawn to the exciting parts of interior design and I like things to be a little bit more action oriented, which is why I'm more, I'm personally more drawn to um, vertical lines and diagonal lines. I love this floor. This is called a herringbone pattern, the way that this um, tile is laid. And it's probably one of my favorite patterns for flooring, personally. I like it a lot. Um, here you have some diagonal lines being used um, in two different ways. In the way that this staircase is shaped, um, the um, railing that goes down the staircase, and then also the black and white stripes on the wall. Here you have your diagonal lines being shown in the lines on the mirror uh, above the fireplace. Too many lines, however, can lead to continuous eye movement, which causes feelings of tiredness and frustration. You always want to be really careful in your use of line, not to put all four together in one room. Um, it can be very, very exhausting. I'm going to show you a couple of rooms where they just overdid the line, and it makes it a really, really unappealing room. Here we have our first one. It's unappealing for several reasons, but you can see that there is just so much going on. You've got your vertical stripes on the wall. You have your curved lines on the rug. You have your diagonal lines on the floor. You've got um, everything has a pattern, which obviously when there's patterns, there's lines. And when you have that much pattern going on, you've got like the zebra rug, you have the leopard rug, you have the diamond floor, you have the geometric chairs, you have the floral pillows, you have the striped walls. It's just, it's, it's exhausting. Here we have another one where the both um, types of line are very, very bold in the way that they are used as far as their colors and their size. You have very, very large horizontal stripes all around the room in a very bold orange color. And then you have the vertical lines that are being used in this chevron, this god awful chevron print of this um, these curtains. And it's a very bold black and white, which makes it a very bold design, which makes it exhausting to look at. Okay, so here is going to be your assignment. You are going to find one picture online that has all four types of line in the design, horizontal, vertical, diagonal, and curved. You are going to paste the picture on a slide, then label it in professional lettering, line. Um, remember, in professional lettering, when you're doing things online, all you have to do is make sure it's in all caps. Using a text box or a shape, insert the numbers one through four on your picture and each number, and place each number where a type of line can be seen. Include the text in professional lettering, um, each number, what type of line it is, and what, li um, what the line is being shown on. And you can refer to this example if you are confused. Here is your, um, here is the example of this line assignment. You're going to find a picture that contains all four, paste it in there, title the slide line in all caps, and then um, what I did is I just inserted a text box, a, a small one, and I um, filled it in with white, and then I made the text black, and that's how I made my one, two, three, four numbers. I pasted each one on different lines, and then I created another text box, which I pasted on the side, and that's where I write my types of lines and where it's being shown. So you can see that my number one line is curved, and it's the round lampshade. My number two line is horizontal, and it's being shown on the couch. My number three line is diagonal and it's in, found in the staircase. And my number four line is vertical and that is my light fixtures hanging. So um, if you have any questions, please just shoot me an email or send me a message on Canvas and I can help you, but it should be a pretty easy and self-explanatory assignment. Um, and you will submit this on Canvas by the due date. Bye.